Hey, for an fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports. I thought today's video would take a little different route at looking at the current free agents the 49ers have in house and giving you my six picks for guys that I want them to go ahead and re sign. Now, can they re sign all these players? Well, we'll discuss whether they can or they cannot, but these are the six free agents out of many free agents the Niners have internally that I really want to see back in a 49er uniform. Now, of course, we know there are 27 unrestricted free agents for the 49ers this offseason. Which essentially means they're not going to be able to re-sign all of them. They want to be just nice sign a third of them, right? I mean, that is a ton of free agents. The average in the NFL right now is between 13 and 14. So the Niners have a lot of people who are going to be hitting the free agent market who will not re-sign in San Francisco. Now, right now, it's changing in terms of cap space. Like, over the cap has them about $13.36 million. They're going to be able to get a little bit more than that with some contract restructuring. I'd say about 20-ish million dollars in free agent money based on what I have heard and done my math on. But right now, no, it's about 13.36 in cap space, 15th most in the National Football League, so right there middle of the pack. Also, of course, draft picks, a lot of these needs and a lot of these positions where they're going to lose people in free agency can be filled in the NFL draft. We talked a lot about cornerback, talk more about that here in just a little bit. And so I just decided to go through the list of 27 and pick the six that I think should resign. I think we'll have a really good chance of resigning. And the question will now be, can they afford all six? And the answer is probably no, but still, I want to give you my six. And of course, we'll wait and see what happens from the start of the new league year and in the March free agency period goes ahead and begins. Number one. Now, this is one, to me, it's obvious. It's the one everybody keeps saying will happen, and that, of course, is Trent Williams. He's clearly the most expensive and the best free agent the Food Nanners currently have in house as he's expected to go ahead and command a big three or four year deal, and they've been rumored to be working on that deal since week 17, which you either go, okay, they've had a lot of time to work on it, that means it's coming soon, or you go, They've worked on it since week 17. There's still no deal done. A little bit concerning. So we're not really sure where they're at right now currently in the Trent Williams situation. But obviously, good left tackles are very, very hard to come by, which is why Trent Williams needs to be re-signed by San Francisco. People want to look back on 2020 and say he's up and down, but in the end, he only allowed four sacks. That's a get. Like, in the end, he only allowed four sacks, I think, was going into what was his last best last couple of games, starting to really get his feet set because, of course, he didn't play the year before. And so I expect him to be a lot more... Not season, maybe season is the word. It's just, just a lot more ready to go at the start of the 2021 season. I don't have any worries about him being a regressing left tackle. I consider him one of the best left tackles in the entire National Football League. Now, let's just say they don't want to afford Trent Williams. Now, I think that they should re-sign him, and I would. But what if they wanted to let Trent Williams walk and then re-sign some of the other cheaper free agents? What could you do to replace him at left tackle? Well, obviously, there's a pretty... Pretty good list of, 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 of top tackles in this year's draft. Obviously, Penny Sewell is your top left tackle, the 20-year-old out of Oregon. He is absolutely phenomenal, but will not be there at number 12. You have to trade up. But Rayshon Slater, equally as good out of, out of Northwestern. He could be there at number 12. Uh, Christian uh, Darisaw from Virginia Tech. Like, there's a full list here, and this is just in the first round. So technically, if you weren't involved or really in on three signing Trent Williams, you could go ahead and draft somebody in the 2021 NFL draft, and that would probably do enough to go ahead and... Uh, and, and at least fill the left the the big hole that would be left there if Trent Williams did not resign. But I do really feel like they're going to let him resign because again, top left tackles very rarely hit, hit the uh, free agent market. And San Francisco again reportedly has been working on a deal for the past couple of months. Okay, again, make sure you guys are subscribed. We are currently at thirty two thousand six hundred thirty one subscribers. We want to get to thirty three thousand as soon as possible. So help us by go ahead and clicking the big red subscribe button down below. All right, next to my list here. This, to me, is an absolute no-brainer. you got to resign Jason Verrett. Now, obviously, the cornerback uh, position for the 49ers is their biggest position of question mark right now as they have six free agent cornerbacks this year that are all in-house. And honestly, as you look through, through them all with Richard Sherman reportedly not coming back, you got to sign the next best one, and that is Jason Verrett, who has had all the injury history, has missed a ton of games throughout his career, and yet in 2020, he proved healthy, and he proved that he is a legit starting caliber quarterback, or cornerback excuse me, in the National Football League. He played in 13 games, which was better than the majority of other cornerbacks because everybody was injured on in San Francisco last year, but he had 60 tackles, two interceptions, and was graded very, very highly by Pro Football Focus basically the entire year, and we talked about that you know, a week on week on week here on the 49er report just during the season, how great Jason Verrett was going ahead and playing. The depth chart is where it gets really interesting and why I think Verrett is an absolute must sign. Currently, as you see, Mosley is an exclusive rights free agent, so he can technically get a first shot re-signing him. But everybody else is unrestricted. Sherman, we know he's gone. Kwan Williams, more about him in a second. Jason Verrett, Witherspoon, Johnson, and Taylor, they are all unrestricted free agents. There's no way that you can just let all of them walk and then just hope to draft all these good cornerbacks in the NFL draft, despite there being a lot of good cornerbacks in the NFL draft. <coughs> Excuse me, I keep saying you have to go ahead and re-sign somebody in-house. I think Verrett makes the most sense. Give him... 
five or six million dollars a year. I mean, he only made like two million dollars last year, so it'd be a pay raise in and of itself. Bring him back, make him the cornerback number one, and then draft somebody there at number 12. Okay, name a 49er free agent that the team must go ahead and resign. I've given you two of my six, four more here to come in just a second. There'll be a pinned comment down below, though. Give me a name of somebody you think they absolutely 100% have to go ahead and resign. We'll keep the, uh, the the cornerback train going here, as I'll put K1 Williams number three on my list right now. As many people, not just in the 49er organization, but in the National Football League, all agree he's one of the best slot cornerbacks in the NFL. And there aren't a lot of good slot cornerbacks, because normally if you're a slot cornerback, it means you're the third best cornerback on the roster, because you can only play in the slot. And you want to move outside to make more money. Williams is, of course, one of the good inside slot cornerbacks. And even though injuries limited him to eight games in 2020, I still think he is someone you really want to go ahead and invest in, just because slot cornerbacks, again, are few and far between, at least the good ones overall in the National Football League. There's no scenario where you make him go outside. What you would do is re-sign Barrett. He plays one side. You would then draft somebody more in that in a second and then put K1 Williams back in the slot. And that would really revitalize and really, I think, bolster the cornerback depth chart, which overall, again, is very much in need of just people being reassigned and just bodies in there because they're all free agents. As I said below, you need to, or as I said before, you need to go ahead and draft a cornerback. That's been my number one choice for the 49ers at number 12. Patrick Sertan probably won't be there, sad day, but Caleb Farley, JC Horn, maybe a Tyson Campbell later on in the first or early second round, all options that could be immediate starters for San Francisco. A lot of them, I think, especially the Sertan, Farley, and Horns of the world can be day one starters in the National Football League. And so with the overall cornerback outlook, as those two are the next two on this list, or the, the previous two on the list here, if you get Barrett on a nice, cheap, you know, veteran deal, K1 Williams, you give him the money he deserves, and then draft somebody, you go ahead and basically solidify the three spots of cornerback that you really need to go ahead and drive home. I'll see you guys this. So if you had to pick one, who would you rather have, Jason Barrett or go ahead and get K1 Williams? If you only pick one, I would rather have Barrett than Williams, even though I like Williams a whole bunch. I'd rather have Barrett, but I'll let you guys give me the answer in the comment section down below. Okay, this one's easy. We all would agree on this one, right? Kyle Juszczyk, 100% on this list. He has got to go ahead and be re-signed. The problem is money, and I'll explain here in a second. First off, he's been here since 2017. He's made $21 million since 2017 in overall team salary. A lot for a fullback. He's one of the best fullbacks in the league. People are saying, well, just franchise tag him, but they're not in a place to franchise tag him because he made like five point. I think two five million dollars last year, and the franchise tag takes the top five percent of all running back sal or all fullback salaries, and then averages it out, and then that's your franchise tag number, which would mean Kyle Juszczyk would make less than he did in 2020 and 2021 if he was under the franchise. So they cannot go ahead and franchise tagging. They have to go ahead and re-sign him. And even though he's been, you know, a 49er basically the entire peak of his career, he wants to come back. He did shed a little bit of doubt, or at least cast a little bit of doubt on returning when asked about it in the uh, couple of weeks past. Throw this quote up on the screen. This is interesting, right? So he first off, not shown, he talks all about how much he loves San Francisco and it's his favorite spot and loves the team. But then he says this, but... There are a lot more factors that come into play now. I'm 29 years old. I've been married for a while. We want to start a family soon. It's tough because our whole family is on the East Coast, and being out there on the West Coast is tough to really have our first child and basically be alone. That's something I have to think about and weigh in on my decision. If anyone's a father out there, an expecting father, I'm not at that point in my life right now, but maybe you are. You probably understand this a lot better than I do, as I, of course, moved away from my family down in Texas. I live in Atlanta now. Not too far away. It's not one end of the country to the other, but you kind of get his point here where he says he wants to start a family with his long-term, his long-time wife, excuse me, and uh, it's hard to do when you're basically alone in San Francisco. So just keep that in mind as we get to free agency. That might be the reasoning why he leaves, even though I think the 49ers make a big run at signing him just based on not just the stats you're seeing on your screen right now, the fact that this guy is one of the key pillars of the offense in terms of not only leadership, but from a run-blocking standpoint, he is crucial to what Kyle Shanahan wants to do in his own running scheme. So I expect him to make a run to go ahead and re-sign him, maybe give him a little bit more, $6 million, $6.5 million. But with the money being a little bit tight right now, and the family issue, not issues, the family thoughts for use check going forward, it could be the final year. We could see him go somewhere else, especially on the East Coast. Okay, now... There are some pretty good deals going on right now, not just on uh, uh, Fanatic hats, 49er hats, I should say, but also t-shirts. got a great combo you see on your screen here. It's all in the description box with a link, chatsports.com forward slash Niners hats. Some of these hats are up to 60% off, and currently they got these sweet hat and t-shirt combos. You get the hat and the t-shirt for 30 bucks, and of course you have the beanie and the long sleeve one for $35. A lot of them are almost gone, so go and pick those up right now, but they're being shown a ton of different flat bills and the Super Bowl hats and the beanies. All of those are on sale. The majority of them are up to 60% off. Just go ahead and go to the link down below in the description box to check out the entire list of hats and then pick one up right now. Okay, 
And it's chatsports.com forward slash Niners hat. Like I said, link is down below. All right, a couple more here that I want to re-sign. These are the final two that I think you can re-sign, but money might be a little bit of an issue, starting with Kerry Hyder Jr. I've been very high on Kerry Hyder Jr., a guy who was thrusted into a starting defensive end role with the D Ford injuries, and obviously the Nick Bosa injury as well. And did they not just produce? I mean, he produced really, really well. Eight and a half sacks in 2020, and that was without playing alongside Nick Bosa, who would have commanded the majority of the double teams there on the defensive line. The problem is he was asked about free agency, and he said he wants to be a top market free agency. It means he wants to get paid like one of the highest paid defensive ends in the entire free agent market. And you honestly can't blame him because, again, if you are about to have a contract year, you want to have your best year as a pro in order to make more money. And that's exactly what Kerry Hyder went ahead and did. So I would love to re-sign him. But my question is, can they afford to re-sign him, especially if they go for the Vrets of the world, the Trent Williams of the world, and obviously Kyle Juszczyk, who we expect to at least make a run at at 5 or $6 million. Again, what Hyder did in 2020, you can't just overlook that. It's a guy who was, of course, not a high draft pick for the 49ers, brought in as a young guy. And then all he did was produce in the final year of his contract, which is exactly what you want to do. Again, if you're a player at that position, the depth chart necessarily, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think you necessarily have to go ahead and re sign him. It's not crucial because you never know what D Ford's going to be able to do, whether they keep or cut him. I'm not really sure you could draft somebody in the second or third round. But you have Solomon Thomas, you have Kerry Hyder, Jones Blair, Anza Jordan Wills. I mean, all these guys are unrestricted free agents. So you got to figure out who's going to be that starter opposite of Nick Bosa. I'd be very, very comfortable. The guy like Kerry Hyder Jr., who understands the defense and he's been proven to be successful in the defense and seems to be on the up and up with eight and a half sacks here in 2020. So, can they re-sign him? Maybe. Will they re-sign him? I'm a little bit less on this, but he's one of the guys I'd like to see back in a 49er uniform. All right, final player here, and it's one that I'm a little bit torn on here. So we did a video, I think, yesterday talking about news and rumors, and there was a website that said 49ers are going to let Kendrick Bourne go and then sign a guy like Rashad Perriman from, from the Jets. But I'm going to put Kendrick Bourne here just based on the fact that not necessarily I want them to re-sign him. Like, I, I, I'd be fine if they did. He's been a third wide receiver for the past, you know, three or four years. But the fact that he has said that they're trying to re-sign him tells me they're probably going to go ahead and pull the trigger on a Kendrick Bourne. Now, he's not all bad in terms of play. A lot of people think he's not the best receiver. He's not the best receiver on the team. But he does have more third down conversion catches than drops throughout his entire career in San Francisco, spanning over the last four years. And like I said, he has been said, been rumored to want to return to San Francisco, which means he could take, you know, a decent deal to stay in the Bay Area and stay in the Kyle Shanahan offense. The numbers, again... Not like he's been crushing it. You know, you go to 2017, 16 catches, but it has gone up essentially every single year. The touchdowns came down just a little bit, but obviously without having the starting quarterback in San Francisco, the majority of wide receivers numbers went down in 2020. So I'm I'm for re-signing him. I think you got to make a real decision on what you think Jalen Hurd is going to be in 2021 because I'd like to have Hurd as a number three wide receiver on that depth chart over Kendrick Bourne if he's healthy, but that's a big if. And so I would at least throw some money at him. But if Bourne wants to 100% make too much money, says, no, I want to get more, let him walk. It'll be okay. You can draft somebody in the third, fourth, or fifth round who's a lot cheaper and then rely on hopefully a healthy Jalen Hurd, which is still a big if overall. There you go. They're on my list of six. I went through the rest of them. Like, I wouldn't mind Solomon Thomas on a good deal. Like, there are a couple other players I'm not, I mean, I mean, Mosley on, on a good deal. Kyle Witherspoon on a good deal. Major Quisky Tart on a good deal. But the six I think that you absolutely have to take a shot at re-signing are the six that I listed in this video. It's going to be a wild offseason. I think a lot of the players that they don't re-sign will be positions of need in the NFL draft. And that could change as we get closer to the April 29th Thursday NFL draft, which we'll see and cover here on Chat Sports. Ultimate for today here on the 49ers Report, I'm your host, Thomas Motz. Signing off for the rest of your day.